This is Owen Eddy. Uh, he's my first musical counterpart. We grew up five houses down from me. Uh, he's an accomplished saxophonist and composer and is a high-ranking member of the Army Band, which is hilarious and wild to me. In high school, we were inseparable, writing songs and exploring our city. He is reserved, kind, and I love trying to make him laugh. And he has a younger brother, Adam Eddy. Some of you know him. Adam is not reserved, one of the most irreverent and funny people I know. Adam is an art professor and an all-around artistic force, musically gifted, and he has an exceptional taste. I have four Adam Eddy paintings in my house, one upstairs in my office here, and he also created the album cover for Brave Baby's first album, 40 Bells. Adam's best friend is this guy, Tyler Burgess. Tyler Burgess and I have been on the same rec league basketball team since we were 12. He is and has been my favorite singer-songwriter ever. Since I was 14, I've been trying to write songs as good as Tyler. He goes by the moniker Hermit's Victory. He has an effortless way of expressing himself, and I admire him so much. Late in high school, the four of us had the pleasure of meeting a wonderfully talented painter and fellow hippie named Victoria Carico. She has been my muse ever since, now my wife and partner of 13 years. She doesn't paint as much anymore, but she is one of the kindest and most creative people I've ever known, and her talent is the company she keeps. She has always had a knack for picking the best ones, and my mother always refers to us as collectors of misfits. With graduation around the corner, I got a call from an older classmate that I looked up to tremendously. Ryan, Wolfgang Zimmerman, called me and asked if I wanted to go on tour with his new band that summer. I was ecstatic, and my life changed forever. We were connected at the hip from then till now, still plotting our dreams and making art. He was always the best player in the room until he met his counterpart and a long-lost cousin who would also play that summer, Christian Chedister. My guy. Our birthdays are two days apart. With two year, he's two years my senior. Christian taught me how to play and be in a band. Light years ahead of me and a bit of a musical savant, he has been rearranging in my simple songs to have substance and complexity for a decade. Christian and I get together almost every week to write together to this day. The writing trio of me, Wolfgang, and Christian has been the backbone of my professional music career. We toured that summer with Sequoia Prep School, which has morphed into Susto, and the two youngest guys, me and Jordan, would chill in the van almost every day while everyone was drinking beer in the bars. Uh, eventually, we became bandmates, bunkmates, and lifelong friends. He has driven me all over this country and has got me home safe every time. And uh, he's the only person I can fall asleep in the car with. College starts that fall, and Victoria is living at McConnell Residence Hall. And uh, she comes across this special guy named Diego, the son of immigrants from Guatemala. Diego did not sleep on the American dream. I've never known someone to catch an interest in something and educate themselves so deeply and professionally as Diego has. Diego introduced me to Charles. You know him, you love him. I, I did not think 10 years later I'd be working with him on a daily basis, but here we are. Charles was always a doer, throwing parties, hosting events, and curating community. From bean night to the bend, he's been doing it. And as we found our way through our scene, I collided with Dan McCurry, a songwriter and aspiring uh, label owner. Hearts and Plugs began chugging along and provided a platform for many artists throughout our city. Dan cared more than anyone, and the proof was in the output in that short time. He taught me how the ability to uh, do artistry and business and how they can coexist. Enter Stephen Walker, Brave Baby's final piece, and we were complete. Our competitive brainiac and gearhead, Steve elevated us and made, made sure we moved with intention. He is one of my go-to hangs. We play basketball every week, we record demos, and we argue like brothers. I had the pleasure of officiating his wedding to his beautiful bride, Zoe, this past October. I walked, lived, and breathed Brave Baby for six years, and then life happens, and we had to pause, and I found myself in a position to pivot. Aaron Utterback quickly became my new artistic confidant. He encouraged me to continue writing, playing, and making, and he is one of the most multifaceted people I know. Incredible player, writer, designer, marketer, musical director. He taught me to keep going. We talk about anything and everything almost every day. I started bartending in 2017 at the Rare Bit and uh, Palace Hotel, and I never knew how much I'd learn about music during this time. Every Tuesday, I had shifts with this beautiful guy, Mel Willis, a DJ known as Mumbles. He has the best taste in music I've ever come across. He taught me how much you can say without saying anything at all, and he taught me how to bartend with intention. Uh, he works with me now here. And coming home late after a bar shift one night to mine and Victoria's new home on the east side, and my neighbor was sitting on the porch smoking cigs, dr drinking high lifes, and asked if I wanted to join. An excellent chef that now is the chef de cuisine at Burns. Rob Looney was the neighbor I didn't know I needed. And I admire this guy's talent, and I, have, I don't have enough time to talk about him. He's excellent. Jason Kaufman, the owner of Lo-Fi, rented me a shipping container office behind his brewery that I could use as a studio and a creative space. COVID hit and he became the only face I saw outside of my home for months. He told me, enjoy this, scary as it is, because never again will they pay you and tell you to stay home. 
He is unique as they come, an artist, entrepreneur, and he has a plethora of wisdom, and Lo-Fi has become our clubhouse as it, with our changing scene. I started putting out solo material and needed help and guidance to represent it visually, and Dylan Dawkins' persona La Ave became my go-to. We started working together often, and to describe his output doesn't do it justice. A modern Renaissance man with a palpable style unique to himself, his work has seeped into many artists across this state and country. With the venues closed, we did events outside, and I needed people to help me run this outside bar, and the force known as Shannon Vote came crashing into my life. She is one of my best friends and inspirations, and we work together daily. And last year, she looked at me and said, I want to start a theater company, and I said, you should. It will be great, and I will see you all at The Void next month. <laughs> With the venues uh, closed, I had to get a, do something else, so I got my real estate license, and I was so nervous that that was not cool. And I didn't know how to, like, get over it. And then I met this guy, Will York, who has been in, in the Charleston scene forever, in the old guard from Sleepy Eye Giant. He taught me that being yourself is all you need to do with whatever career you do. And, and we talk about music way more than we talk about real estate. This is Henry. Henry is, uh, is, is, is rolls out the, um, my team of managers at the venues to help me run. He is half of Nameless Numberhead with his wife, Mari Sorsa. He's relentless, principled, and quipped with punchlines. I'm gracious to be in his, uh, his company regularly, and I get so excited for the things he's working on. I'll see all of you at Digi Rips in a few weeks. It's the best comedy I think Charleston's ever cultivated. Something I never thought I'd do is open a kitchen, but here I am tasked with, uh, with, with, with finding and operating a kitchen in the music farm. I remember eating a Tully burger at a backyard party a few years back, and I had to ask around and dig up the contact, and, uh, and that's Tim Welch, the friend I wasn't expecting, but the friend I'm glad I have. He's created a special product and is slinging it out of a window on Ann Street, and it's really fucking good. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going over, and I'm, I'm sorry, but I shared all this with you because all of the exciting and fun things that I've done in my life, creatively, work, all stems from the company I keep and the company that's kept me. I am grateful for you all, and there are so many more not mentioned, and I could do this for hours. Um, we we're talking about mantras. Mine is never stop doing cool shit with your friends. Thank you.